Hi, I'm Tim. Welcome to our channel. Thanks for logging on. Today we're discussing a vintage late 1970s Hoyer Harama reference 110.245. You can see this pioneering micro rotor automatic chronograph with a distinct sporting bent and stainless steel and plated yellow gold aesthetic and purchase it on our website. Subscribe to our YouTube channel if you enjoy these videos and please click on the card in the upper right hand corner of the screen at any time during this video to see our full sales listing for this watch with additional accessories included in the sale high resolution images for your desktop, and naturally complete pricing details for this vintage Hoyer Harama 1110.245. The watch on my wrist represented something of the last hurrah for the great sporting Hoyer chronographs of the 60s and the 70s, inextricably tied to motorsports then. They remain favorites of collectors today, and this model, launched in roughly 1977-1978, was built for approximately the last half decade of Hoyer family ownership of the old chronograph specialist. On the wrist, it's an easy watch to wear. The timepiece, 38.7 millimeters across the round of the case from 9 to 3, is not a huge watch, but it definitely has stance thanks to its cushion profile. It is slim, despite being the first modular automatic chronograph, the Caliber 11 family, this is the Caliber 12, allows the watch to still retain a 13.6 millimeter profile, so it's slim and it will fit underneath a dress cuff. The watch is a compact 43.8 millimeters lug to lug, but again, the cushion profile of the case means that it reads larger. It reads as a watch substantially over 40 millimeters. The timepiece has a wonderful folded link two-tone yellow gold plated and satin finished steel bracelet. It sits evenly on the wrist thanks to the cushion shape, but the bracelet deserves a little bit of discussion in and of itself. It is delightfully vintage in its folded profile and the use of a curious extensible system for micro adjustment to your wrist size, which is to say it'll let out a little bit of length if your wrist is sizable, more if your wrist is really big and then it will take it all in if your wrist is compact. Now, like the rest of the watch, the bracelet is in outstanding condition. Hoyer signed. It has been seldom, if ever, refinished. As you can see, the light striation pattern that was originally present on the clasp is still present, as is clear etching of the Hoyer nomenclature and polished flanks the contrast with the center. You'll note on the interior of the clasp, all of the stampings are crisp, and even the maker's mark is sharp and deep, nicely defined. It's basically like the case itself. Though plated, you'd never know it. None of the plated surfaces are showing wear through, and I feel that this watch has been not just subject to a benign passage of time, but actively conserved by a solicitous owner or series of owners. You can even see that the lines of the case are crisp and well-defined. The elements that are polished are the elements that are satin or should be satin, likewise are. The crown is correct, Hoyer signed and wonderfully intact, properly sized for the countersunk aperture that acts as its semi-garage in the flank of the case. You'll also note, and this is the true sign of the watch's condition, this is the true measure of its good fortune over the years. There is a sun ray, let me see if I can get it in focus, but there is a sun ray satin grain on the lower hood of the lug and the upper hood of the lug. This radial satin grain emanating out from an imaginary center point is one of the hallmarks of 70s watch design and one of the telltales of surviving 70s watch condition. Oftentimes, this is resurfaced with a circular grain or polished when watches from this period are poorly refinished, which is why I believe this watch has been seldom, if ever, refinished in its entire lifespan. Now that we're close, we may as well talk about the dial because that's so integral to the soul and the character as well as the integrity of a vintage piece being sold today. It's what draws us to the watch, but it's also the arena in which perhaps the most counterfeiting Frankenwatch manufacturer and outright fraud is perpetrated in the vintage watch world. You want to look for water damage, you want to look for tarnishing and corrosion, asymmetrical patina, poorly printed, poorly aligned, uneven marks. This is what you look for and none of it is present on this dial. Everything that is a light on dark print is absolutely as crisp as it was the day it left the factory. Everything is sharp 
everything is intact, although there are some scratches on the plexiglass crystal. You can see all of the marks that are visible are on the crystal, not on the dial base. The hands match the indices. The tritium patina is even. Everything appears to be of the same age. It's always questionable when you see something that looks newer, less faded, or more faded on a dial. That's usually your first sign that something's not right, and none of those signs are present here. You'll also note that the Ray Hot, which is integral to the character of the watch, is beautifully intact. It features dual scales, a pulsometer for the first quarter of the Ray Hot's length, and then for the remainder, a tachymeter. So whether you're a race fan or a race doctor at the Harama F1 track in Spain, this is the watch for you. Now, there's a lot going on inside the case, too, because I mentioned that modular automatic chronograph, the Caliber 11 of 1969, uh, probably did beat the Seiko 6139 and the Zenith El Primero to market. So we're, we're going to call this not just the first automatic modular chronograph, but the first automatic winding wrist watch chronograph period. Uh, the Buren 1281 micro rotor is an older automatic design onto which a Dubois de Praz module was grafted. The whole thing is a 17 joule assembly ticking away in caliber 12 execution at 21,600 vibrations per hour with a 42 hour power reserve. Now the chronograph is crisp and you'll note that the knurled pushers are both intact and correct. The one quirk with this watch being that it does have a idiosyncratic and vintage date setting system where you have to back the hour hand through midnight forward and backwards several times to advance the date. Other than that, it essentially wears and functions like a modern chronograph. Being a very old vintage watch, I would not get it wet, but this is such a survivor that Frankly, I doubt even when it was new, its owner did much wading in the water. A wonderfully preserved watch that's mechanically significant as part of the Caliber 11 continuity, the 11, the 12, the 14, the 15, that's a famous family. So the watch has that heart and soul, but it also has the exterior of one of the last great Hoyer Motorsports chronographs of Hoyer's golden age. And as I've noted, the watch infrequently produced was produced during the last era of Hoyer family ownership when Jack Hoyer properly controlled the company. This is a watch to wear and enjoy. As as charming today as it was then, and because of the condition, almost as perfect looking. This is a watch you can own and wear with pride. Vintage that you can take to the office every day. See it and own it on our website.